there, how are you today? So in this video, I want to tell you some of my story and I'm going to go way back to starting in my childhood. And I'm going to bet that a lot of you, when you look back into your childhood, you're going to see things that were indicating parts of your journey and just, you know, what you're here for. But you're going to find out that there's a lot of subtle things that when you kind of play it back and remember it, it's, it's really significant for you. So here's part of my twin flame journey starting in childhood. Um, some of my earliest memories were from the age of two. But one of the things that I actually vividly recall is walking around my neighborhood without any fear. And this was a huge thing because as a little girl child in my neighborhood, you know, people were very protective. People didn't let their kids just go roam around the neighborhood. I absolutely felt compelled to do it. I remember marveling at the height of the trees and just almost he had a sense or feeling like I was here marveling and wondering at things again and that I never really questioned that as a child but years later I would say why would I feel again like um I couldn't re really remember ever having been here but it had a feeling of like, I'm here again. And that's a really early memory for me. I also remember holding my baby brother. I remember um, just having this blue raincoat because everyone else had a yellow slicker. I had to put that on and go walk around with that on. Um, somehow that was my protection and my shield. And I knew nothing about superheroes because that wasn't a thing at the time that I was growing up at that age. So if I get to years later, um, there were other things that I realized now were also part of my journey. First of all, my dream time. My dream time was highly vivid. I was also a sleepwalker, which I find out years later after working with hundreds and thousands of people for years, it's a twin flame thing. Sensitive teeth is a twin flame thing. Um, having heightened senses about certain things is a twin flame thing. So for me, uh, the other part, my dream time, I actually would dream myself in a place. That place had different gravity. There were people that I knew there. And what I now come to understand is I was traveling back and forth. Now, this is the thing that happens during portals and retrograde energy and what we call downloads. And you're receiving a part of yourself back. I cannot go back to those places. I had to literally replay some of the dreams, the vivid dreams that I was able to recall. And there were other things that were kind of wild, but not off-putting whatsoever, like animals that could talk, things that had a sentience to them. So I realized I had a vivid recall of things that I actually assumed almost everyone had. Now, a lot of people keep this stuff under their hat. They're afraid to reveal it to people. They're afraid to be thought crazy. Um, some of them, they don't even talk about their dreams. We talked about our dreams at almost every breakfast table. Uh, one of the people in my family who didn't quite get it was my dad, but my mom and my brother did. And until my other brother came along, you know, like we would just have these conversations. Now, I also had a best friend down the block and they were Irish. So they were, I would say, believers in what is called the Irish sixth sense and that people have these extrasensory perceptions. So in the 70s, it was called ESP, extrasensory perception. People would do transcendental types of meditations. A lot of people were afraid to do it and they would just be like, oh, I got drunk. But I do recall that for some people, they were, you know, trying to transcend something, get up to another level. Now, for me, I was already at those levels without realizing it. But with my friend, we used to take, play these telepathy games. We try to remember things. And I came to realize I had a rather unique childhood in that sense. Many people not only um, are afraid of their gifts and their extra senses, but they don't know how to fully develop them, how to utilize them for their own benefit. A lot of times it will things will come to them that they get afraid of and then it becomes part of the fear mongering out there you know i too have had things to come but how do you really tell people how do you inform them a much better way that i've found out over years and with working with people is apply it to your life 
for your own personal life. Use your gifts and your skills for your own personal life. If you're able to take that further, then yeah, you can. So uh, going, now I'm going to kind of talk a little bit about my teen years. In my teen years, um, you know, this is when everyone hits puberty. And for those of you who have children, and you're wondering if your children are baby twin flames, probably yes, they are. But they're going to hit puberty, they're going to have hormones, they're going to have surges. Well, that's what we had. And it was, you know, one of these things where um, my cycle started late. And when it did start, it was very sporadic. It was very bad. So much so that um, what my parents thought, maybe there's something wrong. I come to find out I was already in the wind down. I was already in the time frame where the actual cycle was trying to move into place. Now, there's other things that happen during this. You burn off your former sexuality. That means that you're not here to be with just anyone. Your sexuality moves up here. That makes it hard to just date just anyone or be in arranged marriage or be with just, you know, casual things. Why? Because you're up here. Energetically, you're up here. And I've talked to women who don't even know if they've had pleasure or orgasms. I've talked to women where they say, why is it hard for me to date? You can't date in the pool of soulmates down here. It's already been moved usually at your puberty. That's what happened to me. Uh, another way that you know is you feel it from the chest up. You can feel people. You can feel attracted to them. But they might as well be a museum piece because as beautiful as they may be, there's, they're not lighting up your whole body. You cannot align your chakras with those people. Tantra has tried because I found out, you know, not as a teenager, but a few years later that some people tried through other methods to try and force it and make it work. This is why some people try to make their relationship work, try to have people be kept on the hook through sex or money relationships. Now, for a lot of people, that actually starts as a teenager, and it's not easy to connect with people. Not easy whatsoever. And people wonder about it. I'm here to tell you, you're not defective. You're not crazy. There's a reason. You're not broken. You're actually probably already somewhat up-leveled at that stage. Now, there was something else that was to happen later because this was a precursor. This was like a pre-event. How many pre-events have you had? How many times in your life have you had a time where you have a little event only to find out that that was the foundation for something you needed later? Now, the later thing was this. The kissing dreams and the kissing dreams that have never stopped. I was 19 when my twin flame reached for me through a dream. I was pulled up to a lucid level. I knew I was in a level because this was a familiar thing to me of being in different levels of dream time. It's a very physical, tangible level. I would realize years later it was at the very top of the astral plane so that we could connect, sort of connect, click merge, kiss, melt into each other, and be able to go on to our next steps. Now, I was compelled. I was saying, who is this person? I have to find them. Nobody can kiss me like that. That was so highly passionate. Do not be fooled by people that tell you this isn't passion or this isn't romance. That passion and romance is trying to find you. Clear your decks. Get the people out of the way. Get them out of your mind, out of your eyes, off your emotional body. Let them stop pushing your buttons. Find out how to get that in because the kiss is one of the awakening patterns. There are other awakening patterns. I've talked to people for at least 14, 15 years, and this is thousands of people all over the world. There are many types of awakening patterns, but they tend to follow general types. Watch for it in my upcoming book. You can click the link below for a pre-sale on that book. Um, please join my webinar because we are going to be cover things having to do with opening your channels and also 
your cycles. Okay, how do you deal with that? There's been a lot of questions lately through the session, even people just reaching out. Hey, I'm having trouble with my menstrual cycle. Okay, men are having troubles with their, I'll just say like androgen cycles because we mainly don't say men have a cycle, but they do. They do. And those cycles are causing discomfort at the very least. So how do you deal with this? When your body is literally forcing you to swap out all the old patterns to integrate the new template, your new blueprint, your new way of doing it, your new up-leveled level of only having so many, you know, wonderful cycles per year instead of an every three week or every month or weirdly sporadic 15 days, then it's 45 days. Join my webinar to find out how you can up-level with this how you can breathe properly, how you can infuse yourself with the much higher energy that it takes, how you can sustain that for yourself and to do it before this upcoming Lion's Gate. So through this uh, kissing dream, I relearned, I remembered, I reintegrated it. I re-felt it. I felt it what it was like. I searched for it and I was looking for love in all the wrong places. That's one of the things that people do. They're out there and they decide to settle. And even though I met great soulmates, we're still on the journey and you're going to see me come together with my twin. And I know now I used to wonder about it, but I know now I am one of the people here to teach those who are in a separation how to seamlessly unify yourselves, come together, integrate, and have that soul merging passion that you're supposed to have that translates into romance here in a physical life. All of your love languages and then some, because one of the love languages for twin flames is to feel filled with love. And there it is. So I hope to see you there. Reach out, we do live one-on-one -on -one sessions. Join my upcoming webinar. All the links are below. Thanks so much. Have a great day.